Hey everybody, Dan here for Argo Comics, where we do not just publish independent comics, we support independent comics. I started off with a couple of books uh, in our Indie Monster Hall, I had to uh, run, and I now have the rest of the books, so I'm going to uh, go over them. This will be a little more easily digestible, and the fact that we'll have two back-to-back -back Monster Halls. I'm going to start here with uh, Cyclone Comics, the Murder City Devil. Okay, I backed one, two, well, let me do this, one, two, really have to take them out because the glare from the bag is kind of throwing this off. Here we have issue one, Murder City Devil. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, here we go. Got credits right there. Evan Quaring story, art and letters. Diego Vasquez colors. Okay, so Evan uh, Quaring, if you've watched old uh, Indie Monster Halls, uh, we had Lucha Mystery from him and I had bought all those. So now he came back with this Murder City Devil. Um, in actuality, Lucha Mystery had uh, Queen Rock Dora, who I see is set to uh, appear in uh, the uh, War, War of the Independence book by Dave Ryan. So it appears she's featured quite prominently in the all-female issue. Um, so, I think, uh, yeah, Evan does fantastic work. Okay, uh, really like his art, that's why I was drawn to it on the other book. I believe, uh, yeah, it might be like a bit of McFarlane influence, uh, and I really enjoy McFarlane's work. So that would be high praise from me. Um, but of course, he has his own style here. Again, that was issue one. And this was all on Kickstarter. Issue two. All right, here's an ad for Lucha Mystery. Right there. Uh, yeah, so these are great layouts. Again, a little more in the uh, style of the uh, early 90s image comics, which I believe is some of the best uh, dynamic storytelling of all time. So borrowing from that is a good thing. I mean, look at this angle here, perspective. Some artists will shy away from doing something that uh, complicated. Um, but Evan is proving up to the task. Okay. Uh, And, you know, of course, this character must be the Murder City Devil. I've yet to read these. These are whole videos, so not really full reviews. I'm just showing you what I am picking up. Looks like issue three. Looks like he's fighting another demonic force. Uh... Uh, 
There we go, some action from the inside. Yeah, uh, like I said, the art colors are really good also. Everything is uh, working well for this book. Um, yeah, I'm going to shine away from the back of the book because I don't want spoilers here. But they have a good action action shot there. Yeah, really great work. Highly recommended. Cyclone Comics. Okay, so that's Murder City Devil. Uh, get that creator name up there one more time because we could probably search Evan's name right there. Search it on uh, Kickstarter and then put your alerts up catch his uh, next campaign and get these. Uh, okay, this said just says indie comics. So it says indie comics. It doesn't really say Anor Press anywhere. Okay, but it is, I mean, Ninja High School Swimsuit Annual 2023. Uh, so it's usually more fan contributions traditionally in the swimsuit issues. Uh, yearbooks were uh, also fan contributions. These are going on for decades. Um, And usually involves Ninja High School characters. Uh, this one has, uh, I guess it's branched out a bit. It's always been, I guess, more or less Antarctic characters, but uh, Antarctic press characters like uh, Gold Digger had their own swimsuit and yearbooks and everything for annuals. Uh, so those usually, again, concentrate on those characters. Ninja High School ones concentrate on Ninja High School characters. This is more Antarctic Press characters in general. Um, yeah, Tim Lin's character right there. Kite in America, I believe. Uh, and I saw littered throughout. Uh, uh, the other character that they took on Niobe. She's in a whole bunch of this. And then you also get some sequential stories. If people are allowed to uh, uh, submit those as well. So various uh, creators. Lots and lots of creators throughout this. But again, mostly pinups. Occasionally some stories. And uh, usually, again, always put up a, in Antarctic Press, but this one just says Indie Comics. Uh, but, yeah, Ben Dunn, creator of Ninja High School, provides that cover. I think a couple of pinups also. So, always good. Uh, all right. Put this away later. This bag is kind of tight fit. Okay, we got okay uh, number five. We had a couple videos ago, and now we have number six. Okay, the Improbable Girl and the Wonder Kitty. The last uh, issue I had might have had it named Mary Sk Mary Solinsky and the Wonder Kitty. But, uh, and the writer admits this inside the book, that's kind of like uh, having the book called Batman and Dick Grayson rather than Batman and Robin. Um, that was one secret identity and one superhero name. And now we got both superhero names, the Improbable Girl and the Wonder Kitty. Uh, and as I pointed out in the past, this is more of a uh, 
cartoon style. Okay, I actually discussed with the author, uh, you know, the, uh, he has these square word balloons. So, you know, it, it doesn't hamper the reading, but just some strong comic aficionados may be more used to the oval shape. Um, but that's the thing about indie comics. You can do it your way, uh, your style, and express yourself as uh, you see fit. So, this is the heist part three. Okay, there was a uh, artifact stolen from a museum. Uh, Mary Selinsky and the Wonder Kitty were framed for that. And with the help of uh, Percy, he has a whole bunch of names, but uh, I'm just going to call him Percy, uh, a British officer who was uh, helping them try to clear their name. Uh, in the back, we had... Okay, uh, I guess there were some readers who were a little confused. So, the author uh, went to clarify some of the things, because they have two jobs, these characters, and there's a good shot of them. Uh, and Wonder Kitty and Improbable Girl. Um, they have two jobs working for a newspaper and being government uh, agents. Because in issue one, they were given superpowers by a UFO. Uh, and I guess, you know, you hear people holding down two jobs, three jobs, whatever. So I guess they can have two full time jobs. Um, but I guess the government agents. Or the government knows that they uh, kind of doing this more covertly, so I guess they're allowing them to do a full-time job. Okay, at the Lion Gazette is a newspaper that they're working with, but the military, I guess, coincidentally, was the Lion Squad that they joined up. So the Lion Gazette, being the newspaper they work for. The Lion Squad being the, uh, the uh, team that they're working with in the military. Uh, there's the newspaper staff that they're working with. A lot of characters. Um, there are a good number of characters in the military as well, but they pared it down just to this. Uh, for the back here. Um, then we get an interview with Shane Luttrell, who is the uh, publisher and creator of Susie Steen, which I first discovered Improbable Girl and Wonder Kitty in the pages of Yeet, which is an anthology. Comes out through Patreon. I get that. They have chapters of this in there. Uh, or this story serialized, and they have Susie Steam uh, stories in there as well by Shane Luttrell. Um, so let's see, this is put out by Corrales Studios. Uh, Let's see. Well, Joe Corrales is the. Uh, I didn't see him named here, but yeah, Joe Corrales. Oh, here. It's written by J. L. Barrera and J. E. Corrales, the third. Illustrated by J.E. Corrales III. Okay, so that's your creative team on that. And uh, we go on to a Kickstarter book, Counterpoint Comics, issue one, Christy Kringle. Um, yeah, Marat Michaels, 
uh, I guess I first heard from him out of uh, Extreme Studios, which was Rob Liefeld's Corner of the Image Universe. Marat did uh, amazing work um, on some of the early uh, Image Comics and uh, I guess later on into uh, Marvel as well. Um, he had his own blind spot. Some issues were uh, released of that. But he's done a number of books on Kickstarter, Christy Kringle being the newest. And in this issue, Murad is not doing the art. He is doing the story. But we have Matthew Weldon doing the art. He's uh, popular on Anotic Press. Um, and when I saw his name, I definitely wanted to jump on board with the book, being that I really love his work. Okay. Uh, let's see, just trying to find some good examples of his work. Uh, let's see, he also has his own book, Punchline, through Antarctic Press, definitely worth Finding anything you can with Punchline. Because uh, Matthew Weldon is an extreme talent. That you should really uh, be on the lookout for anything he does. Okay, but Marat did the cover. This is Marat's cover. For Christy Kringle. And... Uh, Murat is regularly on Kickstarter. Counterpoint Comics. I think you'll always find a new project with them. And I had gotten an item that I uh, pretty much had organized for Creative United. Okay, uh, Each year we've been doing this charity calendar with the proceeds going to HERA initiative. So this is a Creative United Calendar 2024. Okay. Um, who are all these characters? You can find out on the back. Okay. Uh, Gilbert Monsanto who does the book Highlights uh, did this cover. Um, and this features Highlight and his guest starring Pantheon character from uh, the Highlight book that was available on Kickstarter from G-Man Comics. Uh, and then we have uh, mostly months where creators are uniting uh, each month. Uh, in their illustrations, some of these end up being more of an ad for just one creator, but uh, a number of them went with the spirit of uh, uh, uniting different creators. Um, yeah, so basically your layout is going to be, you have a hole up here to hang it. There's a calendar, most people know how calendars work. and uh, yeah, we're going to have each uh, month, you'll find a uh, copyright notice. This is Joe Martino's uh, book of January, February. We had four creators jumping in. Uh, four creators in March. Uh, I had to utilize my characters with other people's characters. Well, my collaborators' characters with other people's characters in February 
So I ended up just doing an Argo 5 to see if I had from Gilbert in April. Because originally this was going to be a Thunder Zone piece. Um, when Eric Bennett, Daniel Hoynes, and uh, Huang Win ended up with this month. With their world finest being their three heroes that they've united. Um, here are June. June Hawaii, Rick Lozano's. Uh, I know one of these is. John Arujo and Sarah and oh, well, Russ C Cassidy did the other character. Is the other character? Well, he must have drawn the whole thing. Um, G Man Comics, okay, Eric and Bennett. We have uh, Jim Burroughs, we have Rick Offenberger, so they're all involved in these characters. Gilbert's highlight is in there. Elgato Negro, with the two other creative characters. Got the Richard Dominguez. These are all Iron Gate characters from Rodney Lockett. And Stuart Black, who does the Four Horse Sons, did this great December illustration. Had uh, actually Argo 5 Shadrath is in there. Richard Dominguez. Uh, Elgato Negro as the Santa. Um, so, yeah, that's very cool. So, uh, Rick's uh, two of the four horse sons in there. Um, and actually, we have kind of a little guide to them since there were so many in that one. Uh, yeah, so a number of these characters are actually Thunder Zone and uh, Vulcan, Francisco Zamora, uh, Meta, who we just had a Kickstarter for, his book that was funded successfully. So Meta is in there, and that's Ezekiel Azib Meta, uh, Damian Wilburn, Romer X, Jerry Hines as a character from Supercross, the Singapore Sling, and Rex Kaiden. Uh, is Ryan Westbrooks, okay? So it's his character there. Now we did have a month that was left out. Uh, that was an early submission, not on the Creative United website. So I did put out a second edition with that. And that one does also have a Thunder Zone page um, as well, because the Thunder Zone creative contacted me saying, oh, it should be a Thunder Zone page. So I, uh, there's a second version of that. So I got the original version since I ordered it right when uh, I printed them. Um, so yeah, that's available through Lulu, L-U-L-U. -L -U. Or you can go to the Creative United Facebook group for details. And finally, an Amazon. I had this Megaton Man and Pictopia X amount of comics. John Boer is uh, the one who recommended this to me from John's Longbox YouTube uh, channel, which I was interviewed by. And this had uh, kind of a 1963 winner's annual. So it kind of finished off the unfinished 1963 uh, comic that was put out by uh, Alan Moore, I believe in Image Comics. Um, so that never completed. So this kind of wrapped that up. 
And, uh, you know, again, Don is known for the Megaton Man. I did order a copy of his Victory uh, folks, which I'm looking forward to. I had a chapter of that in Yeet. So, this, again, there's Megaton Man right there. He's also appearing in War of the Independence. Uh, the issue that already came out, I think it was number three, was a comedy issue. Comedy characters? No. Three was the issue Shatterrap was in, because that was the Superman characters. Four had to be the comedy character. And Don has a great style. Anyone familiar with his work knows that. And uh, this is in black and white. But a great style. You can order this directly from Don. And uh, yeah, the company, I guess, Fanographic Underground. But uh, if you contact Don uh, Simpson, I'm looking for his signature there. There it is. Contact him, he can uh, sell you direct. And he gives the story of what happened with the 1963. You know, Alan Moore and Don was involved, and Rick Veitch, uh, he was involved, Steve Bissett. I think they were all involved in the original uh, story. Um, so, definitely worth getting your hands on, especially if you want an ending to that story. Okay, so that's going to do it. Again, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and check out these books. Uh, all the uh, companies are in the description, and you can just uh, web search them, and you'll be able to uh, find where they're at. Thanks for tuning in to this one, and we'll see you on the next one.